Welcome back to the first garage. In this video, I will be wiring from scratch two fuse blocks for a 79 Camaro, but this could be done for any car if you adding accessories to it. So we're gonna be adding, we're going from carburetor to fuel injection. We're putting an AC unit in there. Uh, we also have a computer controlled transmission in there. So we have a lot going on that the stock fuse block can't handle. So what we're doing is we're putting these two fuse blocks in there, six circuits a piece. These are 100 amps capable a piece also. One's gonna be constant hot and one is gonna be hot only when ignition is turned on and that's what we're using a 100 amp relay here for. These are marine fuse blocks. Well, we got this on Amazon. These are the part numbers, the SKUs. And this 100 amp relay, you can also get a solenoid, which is the same thing, a Ford solenoid. Uh, this is the SKU for that and it's also online. And make sure that relay is the amperage that you want to feed. It can handle the amperage that you're feeding the fuse block that's switched on for ignition, that you can handle it. Uh, another thing we're doing here is we're putting this bus bar. We're also running a wire, a negative ground wire to this, so we have all our ground to one spot. You don't have to do this, we're putting it in for our convenience. And this is a bus bar, part number 2300 from Blue Sea Systems. Now the power feed to feed these from the battery, that size gauge cable, you can do a Google search and search for 12 volt automotive gauge chart. And what you'll need is the amount of feet that you're going from the battery to these fuse blocks. And you'll need the amount of amperage that will be going through that wire to get the correct gauge wire. Now in this case, we looked at the chart and it was about two a two gauge wire that we need. It'll handle a 200 amp, uh, which is a combination of these two. We got welding cable here, two gauge, so we're using this. And we got a junction block, so it's gonna go in here, they're gonna split it out to two. It's gonna go to each one of these fuse blocks. This part number is 103004. Caspers makes this, Caspers Electronics. And you'll need different size lugs for the cable. You'll need one of these to crimp the lugs with a hammer. You also need a mega fuse. This generally, we got a 200 amp, but we should have gotten 15% lower than what this uh, cable can handle. So maybe a 175 would be good for this, but we're putting in these for now. This goes next to the battery. So get, say God forbid you get to an accident and this gets cut, it's not, gonna it's not gonna ground down to your frame and cause a fire. This is gonna blow first. So you'll need a, a slow blow fuse, or you could put a circuit breaker, your choice, close to the battery. This is Mega Fuse 2000 BP. Little fuse makes that. And you'll need one of these. These are uh, Mega Fuse holders. And this part number here is 02980900Z. And it's called a Mega Fuse holder. And uh, we're also putting these lugs on the battery. This is battery uh, part number 30400 from Battery Doctor. Now with these battery lugs, you'll need the different sizes. So you'll need to know what size these studs are, what size these, st these studs are here, what size these are here to get the appropriate uh, size combination for that. Now to get all these on Amazon, it was under 200 bucks. Then again, we are, you know, we are putting extra stuff here. If you just want to do one fuse block, it'll run you much less. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this underneath the column of the car. There's a bracket there. So I'm going to mount them like this. I'm going to cut this here, this uh, aluminum stock. Drill a hole, mount this to the bracket, then mount it back on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and take that bracket off the car now. Okay, I'm underneath the car right now, and this is the steering column bracket. So I'm going to take this off. There are four bolts here and two more on top. Also, before you do this, make sure you have a hole in the firewall to bring the cables through. We have a hole right there. We're gonna put a grommet in there. And that's from the clutch assembly that we took out. So make sure you have a step drill or something to make a big hole there with a grommet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bracket off here.
Now to take that bracket off, you gotta take this out. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out now. Okay, now all I gotta do is just move this over a little bit and this whole bracket should come right off. There you go. All right, now we're gonna cut this aluminum stock. All right, so we marked everything back up here, just so I know where everything's getting positioned. This is gonna go here, the ground distribution. And we got one fuse block here, another one there, and the relay goes there. So I like the way this looks. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a hole here and put the bolt through. I'm just gonna mark it with my marker here. Okay, so I also cut this aluminum square stock. I got this from Home Depot. You get it from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. And it just has a spacer there. So when I put this on there, I have enough room to get a wrench or, or, or a little uh, ratchet on there. So I'm just gonna make a hole here and I'm gonna put a bolt in through here and bolt this up. Put some clown butter sauce on this. Let's drill this bitch. And you're good. All right, so this is how we're gonna mount them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mounting these on here. Scribe a mark where I wanna drill. All right, let's mount this bitch. One there, and put one there. So it looks like all completed. Now let's install this. Let's see if I can angle this in. <laughs> all right. It's in. That's good. Now I'm push the steering column up and put these two nuts up here. All right, so I just threaded these two bolts on top and I'm tying them down now. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, as you can see, you can't even see it. You have to really go down to see it and it's really tucked away nicely. Right there. So go ahead and start the wiring now. I'm gonna put these lugs in. Now you gotta pop this out. Now put this in. And you're good. Right, we're putting the mega fuse right here. So I'm gonna put some self tappers and pop this bad boy in. That's good. Now I'm going to make this battery terminal go from here to the mega fuse. So I'm just going to cut this here. Okay, so I'm going to cut it right there.
We're going to use this hammer style crimper, 8 to 2 dash 0 gauge, and that's what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and crimp this on. All right, now this goes in. This is the tool that's going to crimp it. You put that in like so, and you let go of the back. Now you whack it. Whack the other side too. Put some shrink wrap on this. Now I'm gonna do this on the other side of this cable. Put the mega fuse in here. Put the cable on here and on here. And just tighten this down. And now we put the other side over here. We made another cable end over there. Put this on and tighten her down. And then it's good. And now put the cap on. That's good. Now put the negative battery cable on. So we put the negative side on, but we're not connecting the positive. So we continue wiring the car. Okay, now we ran the cables in the back there. We're going to put loom over it. And this cable here, that's actually a coat hanger. So let me show you inside the car. Okay, that's inside the car. That's where the coat hanger is. So we're just going to tie this up to the cable and pull it through here and go ahead and finish the wiring on this. Okay, now the junction block. Not enough threads are sticking out of there, so I'm just going to grind this down so I have some more threads sticking out. Okay, perfect. All right, so the power distribution block. I zip tied it there so it won't move around too much when I try to uh, put these self tappers in. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in now. And now this side, make sure it's straight and tighten her down. Good. Now the other side of the firewall here, you can see where the self-tapper came out. Now you can put silicone there or spray it with a black spray paint or so, some sort of rust inhibitor. Or you could pour 15 it over there, just so the rust doesn't get to it. Now I'll put this one in here. So I'm just going to put another, another lug over here. And we're done with the power distribution block over here. All right, so there you go. These are the three, and put the nut on. And that's good. And you're good. We tape these together here. We're gonna tape it with that coat hanger over here and pull it through. And now I'm inside, I'm going to start pulling. Push it through. There it is. Okay, now we're putting a grommet here. So, let me go ahead and screw this in. And we're good. Alright, we're under the dash now. I'm doing one of the power cables going to the big end of the relay here. I'm just going to put that here. And that's good. Now this cable I just made here, a short cable, 
This is going from the other end of the relay to the fuse block over here. So go ahead and put this in. And I'll put this end over here. And it's done. Okay, this is the other power cable from the distribution block. This is direct power this time. This one's going straight to this fuse block. And you're good. Now for the negative distribution block, it's pretty f easy. I just ran one straight cable from the negative side of the battery straight to this distribution block right there. So those are all the ground screws that you could uh, put wires on. So the ground side of the relay, this is going, one side is going to the negative distribution block that we have up here. The other side is going to the spade connector on the relay. So take one off. And that's good. I have the spade connector over here. There, that's good. All right, so we did here. This connector here was right over here. So I took it out, and I'm looking for a switch 12 volt. So I put my positive lead of my multimeter here, put the multimeter to volts, and I'm putting the negative to the negative distribution block that we already connected here. And we're gonna switch it on now, the ignition. Excuse me. And as you see, 12.4 volts. So we have battery voltage when it's on. So what I'm gonna do now, with this that I took out off over there, I'm gonna put this to the switched on fuse block that we have here. And I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put a spade connector on a wire, connect that to the other side of that relay, and we should be done. Plug on it. You're good. All right, so I'll put a connector on this one that was on the fuse block, the stock one. Just put that in, so that's good there. Now the wire going to the relay, the switched on power, one side goes here, okay that's good, and the other side goes to the relay. Now we're connecting the battery positive back on, and we're going to check to see that all the connections we made are good. Now what I did was I put a test light on the ground distribution block, and the other one on the constant hot with a fuse in there and the test light is on so we're not getting power there now I'm gonna test the switch on okay now I have the test light on the main power feed going to the switched on fuse block so once we turn the key to the on position the relay should put power to this fuse block and as you can see it does so now we have Ground distribution, we have switched key on, and we have constant hot fuse block. So that's how you wire everything. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like me, and share me. See ya!